another set of equations that we need to be able to solve because that's what algebra is about. Solve them all. So section 75. X fit. It's all it's all on Carl and Carl fit, so don't send him any letters. He's being okay. Um, exponential and logarithmic equations. How do we solve these? Here's why. We had to work with Blinky for a long time because we had equations like this where we said if you put $1,500 in a bank account and it earns 6% interest annually, how long will it take it to get to $2,500? And we had to trust Blinky. And we had to say, okay, I'm handing this over to the calculator. Here's y sub 1. Here's y sub 2. Give me the answer. Give me the good stuff. Where do we do that anymore? Because now we know logarithms. So if we wanted to solve this by hand, we would go ahead and divide both sides by 1,500 and then take the logarithm base 1.06 of both sides. And we could solve this using the chain trace formula. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how do you solve exponential equations that look like that and how do you solve logarithmic equations. And we probably won't get real far in both of them, but um, We'll do all right. We should, we should have a good feeling when we're done that, hey, now I know why we were doing all this. So that's our objective, solving exponential and logarithmic equations. I wanted to come back to this one because we've talked about it so much. Um, it says you're the winner of a TV game show. So this would be like, uh, I would want to call it Monty Halls, but it's not Monty Halls anymore. It's a game show that's on right when you get home from school. You don't have to think about it for a while. That's where they have the curtains. And they show you one prize, and then you get a chance to trade it in for another one. Price is one. right. Now, price is right. <laughs> let's make Family a deal. Feud. Yeah, let's crazy. make a deal. That's what it is. It's let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. That's All right. With the briefcase. No, that's deal or no deal. Oh. <laughs> let's make a deal. All right. So we've got prize A is ten thousand dollars per week. Prize B, you get one penny today. But tomorrow you get two. The day after that, you get four pennies. So you're doubling this. And so on, doubling each day. Now we've done this a lot. Which of these do we know we should take? We better take prize B. But it's one of those where you might want to see it to believe it type of things. So we had a penny. And we doubled that. And then they're going to double that. Etc. So let's see, what do we have? There's the second day, third, fourth, fifth day, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty, twenty one. After twenty one days, these people were getting ten thousand dollars a week. So now you're saying, okay, well, I had to wait for it, but now I finally got ten thousand dollars, but this is a day. Twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Let's say it's a month that has 31 days in it. At the end of the month, that's what you would have. How much would they have? 40,000. Yeah. So, I'd take either one. Either one would be good. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's good either way. Um, you know, this, this is uh, the, the sweepstakes going on right now, publishers clearing out. $10,000 a week for the rest of your life. If they're giving it to you, hey, I'd take it. But if you have a choice, <laughs> price B is the way to go. It's definitely the way to go. And that's because of what we know yeah, about exponential functions. Exactly. Three money is good. dollar a day, I'll take it. Any equation that contains the form b to the cx. Now, this is a little weird to us here. b to the cx. But it shouldn't be, because when we had interest formulas before, um, we had this one. So the form they're giving us is just to show us that we might have more than one thing as a power up there. But we can solve these now. Because we know that if we take the logarithm base b of this, this is going to cancel out, and that will give us access to that x, which is what we're trying to solve for. We need to be able to get to that x. So any equation that contains that form b to the cx, such as a equals b to the cx, where the exponent includes a variable, base with an unknown power, that's called an exponential equation. 
So that's why we've been working so hard talking about logarithms in these chapters, because this was a set of equations that we couldn't do by hand. It wasn't that we couldn't do it. I mean, we had to have the calculators and we could try it. It's just nice to know that our algebra will be able to get it for us now. So our essential understanding is we can use logarithms to solve exponential equations, and we can use exponents to solve logarithmic equations. So again, inverses as to exponents and that. Let's take a peek. First thing we're going to do is something we actually did earlier in the chapter, and that is solving an exponential equation by finding a common base. So this says, what is the solution 16 to the 3x equals 8? So here's what they're saying. Find a number small enough that you could raise to a power that would give you both 16 and 8 and work with them. It's the number that's small enough that we could raise it to powers to get both 16 and 8. 2. 2 to the 4th for 16. And 2 to the 3rd, which I feel like we've seen that we haven't had to get in there on this one, is 8. Now, we have a power to a power. We just talked about this stuff yesterday. If you have a power to a power, what are you supposed to do with these exponents? Multiply. Now comes the fun part. The big twos are gone. We don't need them. Does everybody see that the twos are already equal? But that is not our problem. Our problem is we need this power to equal this power. So we're just going to drop those twos out of there. We don't need them. They're already the same. And it's one step of algebra. How easy is that? Totally checkable. You can know when you had your test in, hey, that you was right. Plug it in there, 16 to the 3 fourths does it equal 8. Calculator says it's go. So, Chance to get a candy burger here. And yes. So I got it one here. The tab with these is does everybody remember their poppers? You know, it's one of those things where some people will take a little bit longer to remember those two pieces. You know, we used to give you the little cheat sheets. You could work through the homework with the power chart and, and then go from there. But some of this hopefully has stuck in your brain. So x equals 4 ninths. Now, that is a great way to solve these equations, these exponential equations, when we have nice bases. But reality is, it doesn't happen that way a lot. It, it just doesn't. Three to the x equals seven. We take a look at it and say, okay, 3, that's as far as I can go, that's got to be my base, so I need the other side to say 3 to the something gives me 7. And it is something. It's not a something. It's not an exponential. So we need a backup plan, and that backup plan is going to be our use of logarithms. So down here, when the bases cannot be the same, we just can't do it nicely, you can solve an exponential equation by taking the logarithm of each side. Because remember, this is huge, everybody. This is algebra right here. What you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other, no matter what. Keep it balanced. If m and n are positive and m equals n, then those logarithms will stay the same. Because logarithms can be used for both sides. You can keep that balance as you go through. So the next step would be, we notice you can't do the base thing. Or maybe even would want to, right? I mean, do you want to sit there and try and think for a while? 15 to the first, 15 to the second is 225, 15 to the third. 15 is not a number that you can walk It's just not. So there isn't anything nice you can raise 15 to to get 285. It doesn't work. So instead, what we do is say, hmm, I need access to that. I can't solve this unless I have access to that 3x. It's up there in power land right now. It's my exponent. It can't be there. So to get it down, I have to use inverses, which would be 
logarithm base 15 on both sides. Because the logarithm base 15 of 15 to an unknown, unknown power, that's inverses of each other. Perfect inverses, it's gone. And now this is going to require a calculator. And it also requires us remembering how we get logarithm base 15 to the power of one. Tell your partner when you punch in to get this mess on the right. Change base formula. Change base formula. Some of you are lucky enough, you know, if you've got the TI Inspire, the TI Inspire or some of the new color calculators, when you hit LOG, you get this little blinking square down there that allows you to change the base and do it that way. But um, know that you have to know the change base formula. It's just one of those things that you're going to use in math. So now you're going to get some nasty decimal there, but you're not done yet because we don't have X yet. What are you going to do with that? So we're going to need to use that change base formula and then divide by 3. And because, remember we're doing this to try to get exact answers whenever possible. Whenever we find these, we're going to go four decimal places. I know that seems like a lot, but that is standard for logarithms to go four decimal places. There we go. Now that's because those decimals matter. You know, if I want to know if this is perfect, it's not too hard to punch this in. I want 15 to the parentheses 3 times my lovely answer that I just had. And it better come out to be 85. Now let's see what happens if I use my rounded answer. 15 to the 3 times 0.69. Exactly. How do you do that? So what we do is we go to four decimal places because it's going to be super close, but it's probably going to be a little bit off. And you can see there it takes till the hundredths until this, this is off. So generally we're close enough with those four decimal places. So you and your partner should go ahead and solve 2a. What is the solution to 5 to the 2x equals 130? Take a look at the last problem. You'll notice at no time did I start writing down nasty decimals until I got the answer. I want to show all the math that leads to it. All the algebra that leads to it. Check with your partner. Make sure you want your four decimal places. Probably the only mistake that's going to happen with this is if you accidentally forget not to put the parentheses behind one of your logarithms, then things are going to get messy. So remember, we always want to finish up 
it'll pop up that first parenthesis. We need to finish up that second parenthesis. I'm going to answer it in the code in a minute. Now, B says, why couldn't we use the same method that we did back in problem one, which means getting the bases to be the same for this problem right here. So talk to your partner about the 5 and the 130 and why you wouldn't go after it that way. So each drop in here, here's what, I, what people are saying. They're saying with 5 as a base, because 5 is 5, you know, it's prime. It's the smallest number we can use here. If you raise 5 to some power, you're not going to be able to get a nice integer for that 130. And that is absolutely the case. It, it's not going to be nice. So we put something along the lines of no integer. Uh-oh, wrong integer, wrong. Power will make 5 to the something equal to 130. Now it doesn't mean you're going to get an answer. It's just not a pleasant one. It's a nice one with lots of decimals. You know, it's really nice. So we can't find a nice integer power that would be something we can do in our head. <coughs> we can raise 5 to that would give us 130. So that's just not the way to go with this problem. It isn't. So now, how about something looks like that? Solving an exponential equation, 4 to the 3x equals 6,000. is a big number. So, would you stop and say to yourself, okay, 4 is 2 squared. I wonder if 2 to the something is 6,000. Would you even bother with that on this one? Yes. Some might. The rest of us might say, oh my gosh, I don't really care if you can raise 2 to some power to get 6,000. I'm taking the easy way out on this one, and I'm going to use logarithms. Got the good old change of base formula. And all we have to do is divide. See what you get here, what you don't do. Two point zero nine one eight. Two point zero nine one eight. Sound right? This has got it. There it is. So even if there's a possibility that we could have written this with a base of two, the numbers are large. And we don't want to sit there and think all day. Two to something is six thousand. Let me start here. Two to the first is two. Two squared is four. Two to the third is a no. Doesn't happen. All right. Two to the sixteen is six. I know. Oh, sixty-five. All right. So it's like it's in between, which we know means we don't have a nice integer. So how about these two? I think you guys can do these. Go ahead and do these with your partner. I think you can do them. Okay. Because you can. Calculator couldn't care less whether or not you have decimals or not. Calculator says, "Let me have it, whatever it is." Swishing this 400 in here. So these will drop out again. Calculator has no problem giving us logarithms, whether or not they have decimals or not. Cute little computer chip in there that holds all that information <laughs> and just lets us have it. Now I forgot this one. 2.11? No, 1.2114? Yeah. There we go. But is that much easier than we would thought when we went back and had to figure out, oh, Blinky's doing all this fabulous math. Ah, Blinky's not doing so much. It's not a big deal. We can do this. But you guys are great. I mean, brilliant. I walked around and nobody had a wrong answer for either of these two. You're, you're doing this carefully. You're making sure you finish off your parentheses. You are fantastic. Give me your 43210. How are you feeling about solving these in laws? I could teach this to you. Excellent. 
Thank you, partner, for the wonderful help. See you at heart. Oh, oh, oh. But get to your seat. I'm not going to give you the homework just yet. We're going to do one that's a little tougher. Oh, little. Why can't you just make it? Come on. Let's not learn the lock Wait, where's this one? We have to add now? You do. Wait, you can't just like let it make sense for one day. Is this just not in the back? Oh, okay. I don't want anybody getting the homework and getting to a tougher one and going, oh my gosh, this is so hard, I can't do this. Well, I can't. Because this isn't hard. This is too hard. Take a look at the base has to be exposed for us to take logarithms. And what I mean by exposed is the same thing we've always talked about. It has to be isolated. And then you just do what we've been doing. Oh. I don't use that. No, that isn't as common as I thought it was. But it's gonna have a little extra stuff. Yeah, that's where you find the oh, yeah. things. You have to subtract one. So you're going to have to divide by two and add yeah. one. You know, and it's not a, a, it's still calculator stuff. That's all it is. But what you want to do is show all the steps. So what you have to do is say, all right, this is going to be log of 71 divided by log of 3. Then I'm going to have to add one to it. And then I'm going to have to divide it by two. So it's a little more writing, but it's just all. So, pop that one in and see what we get because I know it'll drive some people bonkers if they don't finish it up. Log of 71 divided by log of 3. Add the 1. Divide by 2. 2.4400. 0, 0. So, that was a just in case. There's a little bit more algebra to do. I bet you could have done that one without me anyway, but just to make sure. So, ready for some homework? No, you know, I don't get lost tonight. It gets really mad really easy. Now, the other day, I had to add an assignment and say, graph all of these and give the domain and range. Now I'm taking away graphs. So yeah. I'm balancing that out. It's We're a, not it's graphing these. Well, they go quick. The you only way that we can make up for it is we That's what you said yesterday? <laughs> yeah, you said that yesterday. <laughs> you know, that's why I said this morning. I was kind of thinking, I wonder if they're going to have trouble, though, with the condensing versus the expanding. Because yeah. sometimes we do that section in two days to keep those things okay. separated from each other. I think I spent an hour on it. Oh, I'm sorry. I spent like a half an hour in English because I was in it super early. And yeah. Then after that, and then you get stuck. Oh, I just spent another half an hour at my house finishing up the drawing. It was a long time. Like, okay. Oh, they don't look at that. It was a good one. It just got to be there. That was a rich one. Well, this one won't be. 